Welcome back. Today we're reading chapter three. Fiery foe. Chapter three, where are you? Uh oh. The others followed Cindy's direction and looked up quickly at the great cavern's shadowy roof. They heard them first, a clicking, eerie, constant sound. Then the dark mass whirled from between the rows of slender stalactites. Bats, exclaimed Alec. Giant bats. A hundred great bats poured down from the cavern ceiling in a whirring mass of six-foot spread wings. They glided straight for the helpless four who had flattened themselves out on the great lava slope. They'll get us, shrieked Cindy. Hide, ordered Lindenbrook. But a brief glance around showed him that this was impossible. They were trapped on an open slope. Big Lars was already at work. However, he noticed an eight foot long and six foot long wide slab of lava lying on the slope nearby. Quickly but carefully, he edged his way toward it. When his hands gripped the edge, he lay flat on his back and pushed upward against the slab. It began to rise. Here, he commanded, sliding under the slab. With the bat squadron sweeping down upon them, the others needed little encouragement to slide under the slab too. It's lucky lava is light, said Alec as he pushed close to Lars and felt Cindy move in beside him. It's lucky Lars is strong, you mean, the girl quickly corrected him. Right, Cindy, her uncle agreed. This slab gives us some protection. The bats swept down, turning sharply just above the slab, and then rose their loathsome wings, brushing against the slab top. Then the whirring mass hovered overhead, angrily clicking. Fortunately, they were not guided by sight. Lindenbrook reminded the others. Their radar is working, but it can't bounce sound waves off us. Not with this slab between us and them. Suppose they fly low by the open sides of the slab, Alec wondered aloud. The professor nodded grimly. If the bats decided to search lower, their high-pitched echoes might bounce off their human quarry. They aren't flying off, Cindy moaned a few moments later. She had inched toward the slab top and, lying on her back, could see the circling swarm a hundred feet above them. All we can do, Lindenbrook replied, is hide and hope. But Alec's restless mind came up with another idea. He did not enjoy being held by a flock of giant bats. Carefully, he eased his slingshot out of his pocket. His other hand dug out some round rock pellets, which he had wisely collected along the way. Really? reprimanded Cindy. You aren't kooky enough to think your slingshot can scare off Those winged creeps, are you? Alec, displaying impressive maturity, did not reply. He simply loaded his slingshot and eased toward the top of the slab. Hit one, Cindy persisted, and you'll bring them all down on us. 
She may be correct, Alec, the professor said. I'm not aiming for them, he replied. Bats fly by following the sound waves they send out. When the sound waves hit an object, they know where it is and how to avoid it. I'm going to start jamming their internal radar with other sound waves. Lindenbrook regarded his prized pupil with puzzlement, but he maintained his faith in the boy. Alec pulled back on the slingshot, his eye focusing on a long needle-like stalactite far above. He steadied the hand holding the weapon and then let go of the soft leather pocket that held the stone. Upward the stone sped. It arched slightly as it neared the cavern roof, just as Alec had intended. Went the stone. It struck hard and sharply against the suspended limestone formation. Lindenbrook brightened. Well, demanded Cindy, still mystified. Alec didn't bother to reply. A second stone was already armed in the slingshot, and once again, he aimed and fired skillfully. The striking stone echoed through the towering dome of the cavern, its vibrations joining those caused by the first missile. Suddenly, Cindy saw the purpose of it all. The bats began squeaking at a higher pitch, and the tight formation, closely circling a moment ago, started to break up. More and more of the bats left the formation until it completely dissolved and the cavern above them was filled with chirping bats, hovering, gliding, swooping, or circling aimlessly. By golly, exclaimed Lars. I don't know how you did it, Alec, but you drive them bats, sure enough, crazy. Oh, it's all too obvious, Cindy interrupted. You see, when his silly stones hit that stalactite, it sent out waves. Those vibrations clashed with the vibrations the bats were sending out and made just one big noise. Big Lars looked as puzzled as he had been before Cindy had started to explain it all. Listen, Lindenbrook alerted them. They heard it at once. A faint, high-pitched whistle sound, far off. Suddenly, the bats went back. Into a tight formation and swept off in obedient order. Obviously, someone had control over the giant bats. But who? Hmm. Join me next time as we read Chapter 4. Realm of the Rears. Hmm. Should prove to be interesting. Thank you for watching. See you next time.